Welcome to the brand new Basket Buds edition of the Athletic NBA Show podcast here on the Athletic Podcast Network. I'm your host, Zach Harper. We got J. King, known group chat anarchist and veteran of these podcasting streets and a rookie in these podcasting streets, former NBA player, Josh Houston joins Josh, welcome to the show. This isn't just like a, hey, we got someone for a guest role and then we're going to find somebody. Else. No, this is the third man in the three-man weave and someone who actually knows what he's talking about as opposed to Jay, who just says stuff. Josh, welcome to the pod. It is great to be here. Ten <laughs> seconds in, Jay feels terrible already. <laughs> we just got started. I'm excited to, excited to pile it on. Uh, I'm going to steal you, something from, from why do you have podcast. to why do you have to push me down to prop him up <laughs> I thought it was actually propping you up it was some of the nicest what? things I've ever said about you <laughs> I guess that's fair yeah. that, those were compliments I want to steal something I want to steal something from uh the knuckleheads podcast which is my favorite basketball podcast uh with with Q Quinn Richardson and Darius Miles and I'm going to ask you this question Josh so I'm stealing this from them it's the first question they ask everybody when you got to the NBA, who was the first player to bust your ass? Like, who was oh, the first man. one? Just like you were like, "Damn, this this sucks." So, if you go if you go to summer league, it was I got punched on by Tyler Honeycutt. If you remember him, oh, UCLA, yes, I got yeah, punched on by him. Oh, Rest shit. in peace. A what a cut. name! It's no a pun deep cut. Oh my god, kid was he was good, right? Yeah. So he punched on me, and then you got to remember, I was kind of thrown in the deep end, man. I like first year get thrown in with. KD, Russ, Serge Ibaka, mm-hmm. like those guys. And uh, I mean, KD was my matchup in practice. Oh, shit. That so was more fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Imagine me coming out, kid from kid from Montana, and I get thrown in first practice. And yeah, there's all right. Why don't you just go check the best scorer of all time? All right. That's that's so, tough, man. He yeah, he's, not, does nothing for the confidence. He's pretty good. He's decent. He's, yeah, he's pretty good. That's a tough kind of guard. <laughs> what uh, were you but, trying to accomplish when you guard Kevin Durant? Like, what what were your objectives in your head every possession? You know, I uh, – here's the thing. It's it's almost like one of those win-win situations, you know what I mean? Because if he, if he goes 10 times and I stop him one time, like, that's one more than I, I thought I was going to. Because <laughs> uh, he busts my ass. It's like, all right, well, it's Kevin Durant. But if I yeah. stop him one time, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. For me, it was just like, all right, let me just try to, like – get underneath him and lift him up a little bit and be super physical yeah and then not even let him catch the ball because i i I, that was my i was like i can't let him catch the ball because as soon as he does it's over like what am i gonna do he's seven feet tall you know he's got whatever seven five wingspan like he just i just couldn't let him touch the ball and and little known fact josh was so good at it in practice that kevin durant left Exactly. So gotta, he gotta, saw he Warriors. saw the writing yeah. on the he wall. Knew where, he knew where it was going. He knew, he knew what was up. Exactly. <laughs> he wasn't going to lose his spot to you. He knew exactly <laughs> where that was going. Uh, we got a good show today. We're going to debut a couple of uh, new things, including not just Josh, but the hot take safe zone. I am stealing this from my own show on NBA radio. Whenever I'm with Amin El Hassan on a Friday, we do the hot take safe zone in which we have callers call in. They give us their hot takes. It's got to have a little gravitas to it. And uh, then we ended up ranking them. We're going to change it a little bit here for Basket Buds. Uh, the hot take safe zone. We can ask questions to clarify. We can build on someone else's hot take. We cannot go against it, which I know what you're thinking. Wow. Jay King is going to thrive in the hot take safe zone. No, no, no. Because he already wants to be able to shit on the hot takes. And that is not what a safe zone is. He has to accept them and he can build off of it. He can ask questions, but you cannot cannot deny the hot take so the more i think about this like th- i was built for this because every time i say one of my it. takes you guys just yeah. come out uh, my neck this is the first time i'll have you're not built for this the first time i'll have support i'm excited the first question everybody should know is that the first question jay asked when we told him about this when he hopped on was okay so then we can like just shit on each other about it right it was the first thing he said yeah yeah, but he didn't he didn't make it past hot take he just he didn't hear safe zone at all but the hot take safe zone plus we'll get to some quick hitters on uh best second year player the player most likely to become the new dylan brooks which playing level team is going to make the jump who are the hidden title contenders and 
most overrated young player. But let's start. Let's start off hot. Let's start off with the hot take safe zone. Uh, Jay, do you want to go first on this? Mac Jones is going to win a Super Bowl for the Patriots. Okay, so not basketball related. <laughs> is already, uh, we'll, we'll go. We'll go Perfect. back to basketball. <laughs> Max, oh man, it's it's tough being a Patriots fan, but <laughs> yeah, thoughts and prayers. The, I don't know if this is hot enough. Honestly, I, I'm the first one here. I'm I'm just putting my toes in the water. I I mm-hmm. don't know how hot we're supposed to go here. The Kings aren't going to make the playoffs. Whoa. I rode the Kings last year. Whoa, Josh! Just so you know, I, no. just so you know, yeah. Jay from summer league from summer league last year. Was saying the Kings are going to be good. The Kings are going to oh, be good. Oh, so he switched. And, and oh, okay. he was. All, I mean, he was. I thought all, that like, face you made was because you are a Sacramento native and you. That I, just, I that am a Sacramento native. No, I. I've never been a Kings fan in my life. Like okay. never rooted for all the right. Kings. And, but no, but this was something where it was such a ridiculous claim, or yeah. so we thought that we made. We were like, all right, so you get a Kings minute every mm-hmm. single week, in which good or bad, you have to talk about the Kings. Yeah, thinking that well, they're gonna be bad once again because it's the case. and then they were so good it was such an right. annoying segment. Yeah, yeah, I don't wow, know. Man. So not I, gonna make the playoffs. They're not gonna make the playoffs. Last Are, year they had near perfect fortune. Like mm-hmm. nobody missed any time. All their guys were healthy. Mm-hmm. Their offense was ridiculous, and I expect it to be really good this year. Whenever they're fully healthy, they c- could not defend. They did not really add any guys who can defend (laughs) they unless you want to consider JaVale McGee in in that regard Uh uh-huh and I just think they're due for regression plus there are teams in the west who are coming for them the Thunder were in the play-in tournament Mm -hmm. then they're coming the the Lakers like they didn't become a a real team until halfway through last season they're going to have the whole year with that roster this year. They're coming. The no. the Suns loaded up. The the Clippers like I don't think they can be as unhealthy as they were last year. What if oh, they go get James Harden? That would that let's could be really see. interesting. Dallas was 13th in the conference or they were yeah, 13th, right? They 11. they did not 11. even make the play in tournament. And so they're going to be way better. I just think the West is so loaded and the Kings aren't going to have the same luck they had last okay, year. Okay, let me ask a question. So are, it took 40 wins to get to the play-in last season. Uh, are you saying that they are not going to be a 500 team or just that the the 10th spot is going to have 41, 42, 43, whatever that, is, whatever that number ends up being? Like, is this a below 500 season for the Kings? They'll be right around 500. Okay. They won't be they won't be trash, but they won't be as good as they were last year. Wow. They're not built to take the next step in the development. There was just and Mike wow. Brown's a great coach. I love Fox. I love Sabonis. Like they're if if everything goes right, they'll probably make the playoffs. I just think it took everything going right for them to be as good as they were last year. Three and I don't think they have the pieces to get better defensively, and that's a huge issue. Do you think they're going to change it up halfway through in February then? If it's trending that way, do they try to make some change to make it or do they just blow it up for the year? Yeah. I don't think they blow it up. I think they, they just like, if you're around 500, you're the Sacramento Kings. (laughs) You're probably not too, too disappointed. Even though they probably think right now, I know they're not going to do that again. Wow. Major step back. Wow. Um, that I look, I thought, I thought plenty of bullshit could be coming our way. I did not expect that. I would have never yeah, expected. Didn't that. see that pivot. Did not wow. see that pivot coming. Wow. Okay, Josh. Yeah. What is your hot take in the hot take safe zone? All right. So I got, I kind of went the same direction with two different two different teams where it's the Warriors will be either barely make the play in or miss oh. the playoffs. And the Heat, I, I do not. Take. I do I, not think the Heat. Make I don't the really, playoffs. but I, I have Whoa. no choice but to support this. Take. I do not Whoa. think the Heat make the playoffs. Whoa. Now listen. So as far as the Warriors go, I just don't think in terms of health. I don't think they got it, man. I don't think the last few years, right? They've dealt with Curry missing a bunch of games, Clay coming off injuries, Draymond missing a bunch of games. Yeah, right. I do think Chris Paul wasn't the addition that they needed. Right. I do think that like a guy like Jordan Poole was a better 
fit for that mm-hmm. team in mm-hmm. terms of what they needed. And then you go over to Miami and I just look and they're just, they're so lacking at the big spot, man. It is Outside interesting. It is interesting that somehow the Warriors traded away the guy who got punched in the face by Draymond and added a guy that might be more punchable by Draymond (laughs) in Chris Paul, right? Like there is like, right. I I just don't see. I don't know if it was a true addition. So I have to support the these takes. I, I you have to. I have you, no can ask, you, you can ask questions. questions. You can this ask is, questions to clarify. Takes, yeah, like, these are hot is... takes, and it's a safe zone. Do you not understand what the word safe means? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do, do you not have any faith in Eric Spolstra and Jimmy Butler? Do you not have any faith in Steph Curry, Draymond Green, and Steve Kerr? Now, I, let me let me say that these questions feel a little loaded here. Okay? <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a tone. There's a tone. I was told, I was, told I was allowed to ask questions. Listen, I know, there's a tone. listen, man. Listen, like at some point, dynasties end. Mm. They all do. Mm-hmm. Right? Like at some yeah. point, we lose faith. We lost faith in Michael Jordan. At some point, you lost faith in Tom, like in Tom Brady. Like it just eventually happens. Mm-hmm. Right? Like this isn't something that's going to continue forever. They're both, they're all three of them are starting to hit mid to late 30s, coming off injuries. They added a guy who is already in his late 30s, right? I just don't see them being able to hold up over the season well enough. Now, I'm not saying they're not going to make the playoffs necessarily, right? They just might be a playing team or near mm-hmm. the bottom of the, near the bottom of the uh, of the pool there, but I just don't know if they got it, man. And then over with the Heat, I just – Spolstra, great coach, right? Jimmy Butler wills his teams to win, but mm-hmm. – what else Who, who's you're gonna not, like like you like we talked about in the group chat like they had yeah. some serious guys come out of nowhere mm-hmm. and step up are you willing to bet that they got that again this year yes really? but i can't say that because i have to support you <laughs> no i, I, I <laughs> listen <laughs> like if you do i just i think it's a big bet wow to say we got some more undrafted guys yeah that are going to come in and lead and will this team they, to they the did NBA lose a finals lot. they lost exactly. a lot exactly they, what did they they lost Gabe Vincent, who was awesome for them. They lost he, he was amazing during the Max Struess, who yeah, was, was pretty good. Um did they lose anybody else? They still have Martin. Still Martin. Still have Martin. Um, okay. But they'll still, get I back Tyler are, Hero, though. He, that, he I mean, missed the whole playoff. Two two starters, right? That's two starters. Like and I just Max say, and yep. Gabe, yeah. Bam. I do think relying on Kyle Lowry Bam. is tough exactly like, he like he doesn't really hold up and he played a lot last year but he didn't play well he was just, he was racking up minutes for them but i i thought he was pretty bad last year considering yeah that's man Woo. two hot takes hey you came in you came that's in what, hot i like that listen i gotta leave my mark day one here so yeah all right let's my hear hot it. take this one's gonna be cr- i could i could already sense this one's gonna be just out of control <laughs> just a look on his face he's ready to drop my, this my hot take get ready for your four or five matchup in the east first round between the indiana pacers and the orlando magic both those teams four are finishing five. the top six in wow. the east. <laughs> you came with a double hot take mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is it your four five enough. matchup that is your four or five matchup the Pacers are loaded. They are low. They have so much offense. Tyrese Halliburton is so good. I love Jairus Walker added to that, that whole mix, like between him and Miles Turner, assuming Miles Turner doesn't try to get himself traded on a podcast to the Lakers again. Like Miles Turner, I think is finally off the trade block. I don't want to completely say that, but at least this year, I think he's off the trade block. They have so much shooting. They have so much scoring. Rick Carlisle is a great coach. I think that that team is going to rack up wins and then the Orlando Magic, you have to remember, after a 5-20 and 20 start last season, 5-20 and 20 start, they went 29-28 and 28 the rest of the way. They were top six in defense over the last 57 games. Paolo Bancaro is a monster. Franz Wagner is a monster. I think we're going to see a little bit out of Jalen Suggs, but I actually think they make a move in December or January that bumps them up even higher. I just think this team is going to make a massive, massive leap. The Magic's young core is so intriguing because Wagner and Boncaro, they aren't just good, but I think they are going to fit together in a way that's going to be really tough for the rest of the league to handle. 
Mm-hmm. When you have a 6'9 dude in Wagner who can run pick and roll and a 6'10, 260 dude in Boncaro who can run pick and roll and initiate offense and do all of that, it's so hard to guard. And yeah. and those two guys give them the chance to have huge lineups on defense, like just enormous lineups on defense. And I loved what we saw out of Boncaro with Team USA where One he, of the clearly, right spots. he clearly bought into defense as – his way to kind of make an impact. And mm-hmm. I thought he just guarded at a much higher level than we've seen of him in the past. So there were six over 57 games, game stretch. They were sixth in defense for that young ass team. Like that to me, that's, I, I think, I think Mosley can coach. Um, and I just think that, yeah, they got off to a bad start and maybe teams didn't take him as seriously towards the second half of that season, but that team's good. The team's legitimately I, good. I want to see Suggs too. Cause I'd he love to see Jalen so Suggs hard. do anything. I was such a fan he, of his coming out, and and he's been horrible. Defensively, he's he's really tough, though. Yeah, and, yeah he's good defensively. So and Chris Dunn, but it's 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 so hard to be good offensively as a short guard if you just cannot shoot at all, and he can't shoot from mid range. He can't shoot from Chris deep. Dunn. That wasn't right. I don't. I like Chris Dunn. I don't know why yeah. I did that. <laughs> Chris <laughs> Dunn has has fought really hard yeah, to he's reestablish got his way back himself to the league. as a yeah, legitimate he NBA He might start player. for the Jazz. Yeah, that was. Yeah, like, I take that back. <laughs> Chris, Chris Dunn, poor Chris Dunn. But yeah, I, I want to see if Suggs can develop at least a little bit of a shot. He. I loved him in college. I just think he makes a lot of winning plays. Yeah. But it's kind of like Kemba Walker early in his Charlotte Hornets mm. tenure. Like, if you can't shoot at that size, it doesn't matter how good you are at everything else. And so he has to get that piece down. Kemba did and became awesome at it and ended up scoring a ton of points and making all-star games and everything like that. But it took him until he developed the jump shot to get to that place. Yeah. Fultz, can be, Fultz was actually pretty good last year. Fultz was pretty good for them last year. Uh, Jay's guy, Cole Anthony, you know, maybe. I've become a Cole guy. Anthony guy. When? They didn't used when to did be. you become? He, he used he... to, Josh, he used to shit on Cole Anthony constantly. What he is up with... For no reason. A lot of. A lot no of reason. changing opinions from Jay here. I know. Yeah, like because as new information comes Anthony. in, I am I am willing to, to adapt and I, evolve I was... and grow. You, and you have Cole literally Anthony, said so many times that you are incapable of stepping away from a bad take. That's right. I, I have good takes. You can't say that when new take. information comes in, I evolve when that is that's your mantra. Cole Anthony used to be a terrible decision maker. He mm-hmm. has toned down his game so much to become a better player. And he he doesn't probably have as, as many big scoring nights. He doesn't have like but he just makes better plays on a possession to possession basis. I'm a Cole Anthony guy now. So smart or safe and evolving are two words we got to get Jay up to speed on. Safe and evolving <laughs> because I don't think you've used either of those correctly today. I evolve. I mean, you may not notice it because you're not evolving, but he just throws uh-huh. it out a couple more times to really yeah he just home. said yeah it's like hey what, what does evolve mean he's like you know it's when you evolve it's it's one of those things yeah, it's one of those word of the, <laughs> day the evolution yeah. of today's yeah. word was evolved. one of those one of those daily like tearaway calendars like today's word of the day is evolve oh man zach's gonna <laughs> like this one yeah i was actually gonna love this i'm gonna talk about the kings it's gonna be great wow i was really thinking like you were gonna go with the, your rockets love for the hot take safe zone i'm so glad because I didn't want to. I still believe in the that. in the Rockets. The Rockets are going to be good this year. You said they're going to win forty games. Yeah, Ooh. I did. Forty games. Yeah, yeah. Is it still the safe, safe zone or is this a non? No, 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 no. You get one hot take safe zone. Then th- this can be unsafe. Episode. I'm okay with it being unsafe. Okay. The Rockets have a defensive identity. They have a lot of tough, rugged guys who can guard a bunch of different positions. They have a new really? coach who will hold those young guys accountable. And um, they're going to be legit. No, I I think they're like I think they're a year away from being legit. I think I still think they're too young, um, with a lot of that roster, and I worry that when you couldn't score efficiently last season, adding two guys that made less than forty percent of their shots with high volume. When you put it is that way, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like like I do think they're going to be better. I think they're like I think. You know me, I was all in on this core last year of like in the future. 
I love me some Jalen Green. Like, I I think there's a lot there. I, I think Jabari Smith was was better than what we saw last season. Right? I think there's more to his game than what we saw in his rookie campaign. And he kind of cleaned it up a little bit towards you know towards the second half of the season. But um, but I just think like that's Yudoka coming into that Celtics team and making them so great. Yeah, that was there were a lot of like really good players. I think there's the idea of a lot of really good players on this mm-hmm. Rockets team that still it's going to be take a little bit longer to mold. Josh, well, I don't you know think, how you view them. Well, I just don't know if the maturity is there yet. Right. Like they just I did, like that's everything you heard last year too of like this is like an AAU team rather than this yeah. is an NBA environment. I mean, when yeah. you get John Wall coming in talking about like these guys don't take it seriously, like <laughs> I mean, you know, I saw like and you already got yeah uh kevin porter jr who knows right well yeah i think he's i mean i can't imagine he's don't can't imagine we'll see him play basketball which which actually i mean but will we the league is so weird man like that's true yeah you don't know you don't know like i mean miles bridges well who knows again but like what's going on with that right you just don't know right i do feel like sometimes a little inconsistent in terms of like what they decide to punish and how they punish it yeah you know what I mean? But yeah, you know, I just like I love this team a year from now. I just right. don't they know. Just, I just don't right away that turnaround results in wins. Was the best vet for them to bring in Dylan Brooks? In terms of like they already are having a problem that's, with that's such an existential question. But that, I'm just saying, like, like they are already having a that's problem. That's not even with like its own podcast. Level. That's it's a podcast like, series. Like that's a like, special man, report by like, this is the, the guy that's that, gonna now lead the like help lead the way and right. set an example. He already he already hit someone already. Lost. Yeah. He has that, already that was been actually kicked out of and, then, and then blamed it on <laughs> it his nickname, which he gave himself. It's just interesting, man. And last a... la- in the playoffs, he hit someone in the dick and blamed blamed the media. Yeah. And now he hits and then he blamed the refs for his because right. of his nickname that he gave himself. Well, then also, man, like I get like Ime, great coach. Yeah, I think Ime is like the coach, team. man. Oh, Legit right? coach. But you have to look at it from this perspective. Ime's been a little bit of trouble himself. Right? Is the credibility there to mm. really like rein in? behavior is the one i mean the one year he coached it was great right great. like it was and then it, it was, just wasn't and, and then and then he didn't get another, two didn't places get... man yeah back to back yeah it's tough that's um, tough i just think as a player you look at that and kind of go like oh you're talking to me about behavior well All okay right. that's an interest that's now that's good because it's such a young team right that self you know team exactly kind of policed itself a, you yes. know marcus smart's kind of policing that that room, sure. right as you know since you've been in those locker rooms a guy comes in and he wants to get on me about how i'm acting it just all right that's but a- again that oh. comes down to the maturity level right yeah. like but is there a maybe, separation uh, is there a separation between look at how you're acting and oh he wants me to make a defensive rotation and do that consistently like can you separate the basketball piece from the other stuff because well, that's I the think maturity. it's the basketball the maturity piece thing yeah. where he separate it's, it. It's going to be a huge, huge culture change for them going from Steven Silas, who might be the nicest person in the NBA, but is also right. like a bit on the meek side for, mm-hmm. for coaches. And he is going to go in and just start barking at guys from day one and be right. super honest and hold guys super accountable. And he'll probably be honest about himself too and everything. Yeah. He's you know got to be done wrong. You know what I think is and... interesting about this? Like they and they brought in, you know, Fred. Fred's gonna help like some of that mentorship. And Jeff Green helps some of that mentor. Like Jeff Green was a was a great right. pickup for them. Um, but I, I think another interesting thing, and, and Jay, you can kind of speak to this a little bit of early on in the season when Ime was there um in Boston, they like a lot. I remember a lot of people questioning rotations, question his lineups, like what's he doing? And and you kind of do have to just figure stuff out on the fly and then it took off and it was great there's like there's some real rotation issues with this team because there's they actually have so many guys that they need to get on the court and i am curious how that manifests manifests itself in in what josh is talking about with the maturity can those guys can those young guys take a back seat early on and trust that they'll get their time and the vision is there and it's going to work out yeah that's a tough part when you're coaching young guys 
mm-hmm. is like convincing young guys that it's not about stats. And because let's be honest, in the NBA, a lot of your next contract is how many points did you score? For sure. What are what are the individual stats you put up? And it shouldn't be like that, but it is a lot of the a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And so you got to convince Tari Eason like you're coming off the bench. That's the be- that's for the best for us. You could you could score more points. You could take more shots. But we need you to be a defensive minded, tenacious dude and just buy into that. And that's mm-hmm. tough. That's tough to tell young guys. Um, mm-hmm. So I I do think that piece of it. There are concerns about a lot of that stuff. They still have a lot of really young guys who have not like been consistent about the way they've played basketball throughout the years and they've gone unchecked that's what's going to be interesting right it's like you get a kid who for how for last two three years right has basically been allowed to play how they want behave how they want do those things right it's just going to come down to like the maturity of when he does when he may does come in and bark at him right yeah are you going to handle it yeah and and how far does he go with it like exactly. does he does he pull Jalen Green when Jalen exactly. Green starts making bad decisions? Is that going to happen? How is Jalen Green going to react to something like that? Like, I just want to see Jalen Green and Cam Whitmore on the on the floor together, just jacking up shots. I love those that, two that's so your much. Dream. I love those that's two so dream. much. Like, I just want to see those guys score like crazy. I don't even care about the defense. Fuck the defense. We don't need that. Defense, that's for other teams. We don't, we don't need to worry about that right now. I think their defense could be pretty good, man. I think it could be really good. It was really bad last year. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It was awful. So but was they, brought in, yeah. they brought in Brooks, who's all defense. They brought in Van Vliet, who's as professional as it gets. And even no, though this is too much small, Rockets talk. Let's, let's move on. This way is, too we, much we, we got sucked into a, into a whole Rockets podcast. Um, all right. Let's do some quick hitters here. <laughs> Josh, who is the yep. second or who is the best second year player according to you? Okay, so do we, we need to clarify best second year player or like second year player that's going to make the biggest jump? Because best second year player is is, is Paolo. Right? Um, like, that, that's yeah. got to like yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah. everybody yeah, knows that. that already. So let's do the jump. Let's do okay, yeah. right. Does Shane everybody Sharp. know that? I think there are people around your old franchise who would say Jalen Williams. Which one? Yeah, right. You got to be more clear. The good one. The good one. The, the, yeah. yeah. Santa Clara. <laughs> the only one they yeah. might say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess. Yeah, right. Okay. We can argue about that. Right. But, you know, we're not. I, I didn't want to. We don't want to focus. I'm assuming on ones everybody already knows is the real deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I got to go Shaden Sharp, man. Portland. Ooh. I think with Dame gone, I think he takes a huge jump. You know what I mean? He takes on a lot of responsibility. I mean, you look at their guards. Him, Simons, um, and then they got Grant on the wing. Like mm-hmm. I think that's a that's a solid. Now I'm not saying that they're going to be dominant or they're going to you know win a bunch of games or anything, but I think on the guard level, like those two, yeah. Simons and uh, and Sharp, that's a that's a good duo right there. And I think he takes a big jump this year. Jay, if we're going with jump, I got Benedict Matherin. Okay, Benedict Matherin, I. He had a bunch of great games last year, wasn't always efficient, kind of a chucker, kind of like up Zach's alley of shoot first, ask questions later type of guy. I just think he's the type of person who is super competitive, puts a lot of work into it, and that, that team is set up with a lot of young guys. They're set up to run and gun. They're set up to like really push the pace and live in transition. And I just think he's going to be one of the biggest beneficiaries of that because Plus they're going to be a poor seed. Yeah. Are we still in the safe zone? Or can, can I bash <laughs> you for that? <laughs> uh, all right. My second year player making the leap. Um, uh, you guys kept in the top seven picks, which you know I respect. Like those are two very enticing, good young players. Let's get away from the Adam Silver round. Let's get all the way down to where Mark Tatum is making the announcement. Max Christie for the Lakers. Uh, I think he's going to make a big ass leap. They don't really have a lot of depth at the position. He's it's like him and Austin Reeves are kind of really their own the the only like traditional two guard molds on that on that roster. You know, like they have a lot of guys that they can play in different positions. But I think Max is going to get a an opportunity. I think he's going to he's going to be really really good for them. I'm big on Max Christie. 
I don't hate that take. Yeah, I like I that. No, I think he's going to shoot. Good I think take. he's going to be able to attack a little but, bit. He'll play <laughs> enough defense. I, I also won't be shocked if he just is not in the rotation at all. Sure, yeah, and, same. And but, I, but... <laughs> <laughs> but if he does, then, then there's a chance. Uh, all right, next next quick, quick hitter. Player most likely to become the new Dylan Brooks. Jay, go ahead. Oh, we've been waiting. Dylan Brooks. It's still Dylan Brooks. I was, I was, was going to say the Sorry, exact so we're unanimous. Yeah, it's the exact you know, same it's thing. Exact he just hit somebody in the dick. The four crack. minutes into four minutes into preseason, he just hit someone in the dick. He is back. Allow me to reintroduce <laughs> oh myself. My, my name is Dylan Brooks. And, then, and you know what this is? You know what the new Dylan Brooks is? Wealthy. This is Dylan Brooks with eighty million dollars now coming his way. Burn on fire. There is him. like that was him in a contract <laughs> year. A contract year. He was doing all that nonsense. Yes, I love it. And now Five that dude has the money to burn, money. baby. Yes, he's he's throwing out dick taps in preseason. He he's ready to maybe ramp it up a little Setting bit. Every time you think he should tone it down, uh, he goes the other direction. I like that he thought Daniel Tice was like selling it. I like that he was he was like, oh, I don't think I got it. Like we can see it. You know well, what's you crazy know to me televised. is he leans into this behavior, but then when confronted about it, he's like, oh, it was that guy's fault. That's, right. why yeah. <laughs> That's why he's like, the best. Like he's all about it, right? Like he's getting in people's faces, doing all this extra shit. And then after the game, they're like, why'd you do that, man? He's like, well, that was, that was his bad. That's his fault. Well, he me- started the it. The media built this up. The media, the media built this up. The media like, tricked the refs if, into calling a tech on me. If you're going to do it, do it. Yeah. Just do yeah. it. Right. Josh, Just do you do remember it. a guy? Like, what do you do with a guy who has that reputation? Is it in your mind when you're on the court with someone like that? Or it only is in your mind once it happens? It's like a guy who's a nut puncher. It only is in your mind when ha- because you have to remember I was on the team when Draymond kept kicking people in the oh, nuts. That's right. <laughs> when Draymond kicked Steven in the nuts, yeah. I was on that team. And like yeah. you don't think about it because that's not something I should have to think about. Agree. When I'm yeah. playing. I should not be out there going like, oh man, really hope I don't get hit in the nuts today. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's, that's not something that point. happens in the true flow of the game. And, what, 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 man, we could do a whole episode on just but that. But man, like dynamic. that when it kept happening, yeah. you're, once you're like, okay, maybe. Twice. Like this guy is like, all right. This, was was that something crazy. where you guys are in the locker room just talking about how Draymond just keeps repeatedly kicking people in the dick? Yes. Yeah. And uh I, <laughs> giving Steven a super hard time about it. I would I would say this it, about like there is a bravery in him doing it to Steven Adams, right? Like it's one thing if he does it to somebody else. Right. Steve is no joke. Like, he, like he's a nice dude. Yeah, he's a nice dude. Sure. But if, but if the, if that flipped, he could, he would level yeah. cities. Yeah, I've only There's ever seen do Steven flip one time. Yeah. Oh, and it was uh, it was in L.A. We were playing the Clippers. And I forget who it was, came down, attacked the basket, went at Steven and like hit him in the chest or something like that. Something a little dirty, wasn't called. Steven drops. That guy runs back on defense and I see Steven lift. And you know that look you see players do where they're like, the play the play is going on, but it's over in yeah. their head. Like you yeah. see him and they're on like that war path down the court tunnel vision. <laughs> We've seen that. We've seen that. Like Giannis with times. Mike Dunleavy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm ta- so he's like on that war path down the court what headed straight point. for this guy. And the guy yeah. has his back to him and Steve's coming down the court, like pointing at him and he turns and sees Steven and his immediately hands go up like this. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It was an accident. Could immediately cause he's a, apologize. Cause he's, the, he's the strongest guy in the league. Uh, in, the, yeah. in the world, yeah. Well, Pro- probably Peck still exists. Peck still Peck, exists. Well, Peck guys running mobs back in Serbia. Yeah, but good for that's, him. Yeah, good for <laughs> yeah. Quite one a career my, change. One of my favorite <laughs> players I've ever covered. Yeah, Just I liked. Him. I liked him too. Oh my Terrifying God. human being. So nice though. Terrifying human beings. But oh my God, he was the nicest guy. And then yeah. one time we I've said this on the pod before, but uh, one of my favorite Peck stories is he got this grizzly bear tattoo on his forearm. And we asked him why. And he's like, everybody's afraid of bear. I'm like, yeah, I, never, <laughs> no, I get it. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, sure. That's, yeah. I mean, absolutely, bud. Good yeah, for you. That's, <laughs> that's good logic right there. All right. So everyone's got Dylan Brooks as the next Dylan Brooks. This is money Dylan Brooks is a different Dylan Brooks. That's going to be tough. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Which play in level team makes a jump? 
Uh, Gotta go Lakers. Lakers? Yeah. You have to. I just think that that's the obvious choice. I disagree. Really? Thunder. Thunder. But do you think, but if they're both plans, right? Who's Mm. better? Hmm. If the Lakers are better than the Thunder, doesn't that make them having the biggest jump? But so, point. yes and no, because the Lakers, everyone thought that they had a chance to win playoff series because they had LeBron and Anthony Davis. The but Thunder, they were still a playing team. The Thunder were a surprise right. just to be in the plan. But you never know if they're going to have LeBron and Anthony Davis. Exactly. Well, that's what it comes down to: is yeah. Anthony Davis a healthy Anthony Davis? Look, you know, healthy LeBron, like. You, you know what's cr- like people don't really talk about this too much. Like LeBron's had one healthy season with the Lakers, and they yeah. won the title. But he's had, right. he's had one healthy season. Asterisk. He's missed a t- he's missed a ton of games. <laughs> <laughs> he's missed a ton of games with the Lakers because, of course, he's in his late thirties. Like we we've taken him for granted. Yeah, his health. Sure. Yes, there's never been anybody like because he was bionic forever, and now ridiculous. This is twenty five like, games a year. Like it was it. 17 years with like no real injuries yeah yeah it's truly insane yeah, ridiculous it's all right okay so, so, so you're going lakers jay are I'm you going, going thunder i'm going thunder i think chet changes things for them because he's the rare do i call him a rookie he's a rare first year a player yeah. who will probably be good right away just because i think the defense is going to be there he's so smart about when to rotate shot blocking awareness all that stuff it doesn't worry to you that he whined about Plus, like oh he hit butted me in the nose no i love that i love okay. that I'm, so you I'm, like you I'm like here. you like someone not taking accountability and just crying to the ref i'm here for all media? beef yeah that's i'm cool. here for all beef okay is is what what i'm that's why i love dylan brooks i was just about to say there we yeah. go. <laughs> we're, we're back <laughs> yeah i guess we i guess he's but, gonna type at this point like something happens and you just go blame somebody he's else. also <laughs> he's gonna be taking minutes from basically sub replacement level centers mm-hmm. Th- their center rotation last year was so suspect and i just think chet fits the vision of everybody can get a rebound and go and run the break that team is going to be able to have five guys who can beat you off the bounce and get into the lane and shoot from three like i just think chet is going to change things for them on top of all the other young guys are probably going to take a step forward like giddy giddy I mean, we saw Shea Gilgis Alexander in the the mm-hmm. World Cup, just absolutely dominant. And Jalen Williams, last by the end of last year, he was a totally different player. Now he's that level for a whole year. I just think they're going to be really, really dangerous. My pick is the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think it's a fifty win team. Like now, I don't You're think in. they're going to be. I don't think they're good in the play playoffs. But I think in the, like that. It kind of reminds me of those Jazz teams with Rudy where like, I think you're built to be really good. If healthy, I think you're built to be a really good regular season team. Um, Ant is going to be on another level. Cat missed a lot of time last year. <clears throat> and I don't know if the, I don't know if it fits with Gobert and Ant on the court. Like, I don't know how that trio That's my works. Worry. That's you but but with, with or, the three, well, well, here's the thing. When the, when the three of them were on the court together, they sucked offensively and they were the best defensive team in the league. You know, like I, I do think there, there are more pluses than we give them credit for. Again, I don't think it works in the postseason. Like I think it's something you can easily dissect. But on random nights in the regular season, mm-hmm. I think a healthy Wolves team, especially McDaniel's in a uh, contract year, he's going to be a monster. Like they, I think the don't supporting cast, walls, is, my dude, the supporting cast is is a lot better than what I think it was last year. Like, I just think that this team is built for the regular season. Yeah, and Edwards. Edwards is due for He's another so yeah. big, big step forward. My my biggest concern there, on top of the fit issues, is I think Rudy might be slowing down. Mm-hmm. Like him in the World Cup. Granted, it's not NBA play; it's different. But it's like come he on, was man, you not cite the World Cup is come okay. On. Then then let's go back to last year. He was not totally the defensive impact maker if you look at shot blocking numbers if you look at a lot of different stuff he wasn't the dominant defensive player of the year guy that he was before that and if he's not that then that's a real problem i i don't know if i agree with that first part like i i'm I'm getting to the numbers right now they they were really good defensively with him on the court 
but he, in in Utah, he was a top five defense, like almost For sure. Just yeah. by being on the court, it didn't right. matter who was with him; he was top five defense. For sure, yeah. Does that uh, exist now? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it helps. Like he'll having, still be impactful. I, I just think, think it helps think... having McDaniel's in a in a contract year. Like Ant is taking defense seriously. Like Cats, obviously, the weak link there. Um, but I don't know. I think they'll be. I think they'll be a good defense. I mean, they were again when they had their main guys last year. They were really good defensively, and really shitty on offense. Like, like worst in the league on offense level in terms of efficiency. But yeah, that's uh, that's my pick for at least a regular season jump. Um, let's do this one next. Let's do most overrated young player. Jay, we'll start with you. Lamelo Ball. Oh, he's been itching. Lamelo Ball. What? He's so good. I just oh, so yeah. I got a question. Like so, you so you put him on a playoff level team. What does he turn into? S- still, probably an inefficient chucker who makes great, brilliant passes from time to time, right? But also t- settles for bad shots, s- takes floaters that he doesn't really make too often. Um, th- to me, his issue is like he pisses away possessions. Just pisses him away, and you cannot have a point guard doing that. And he's an all; he's been an all star. Like this is a guy who should be held to a really high standard because his teams have been bad. And I understand, like, like let's say look at Devin Booker; his efficiency was bad until the team got good, and then it was like, oh, actually, he's been really good this whole time, but his troop shooting percentage wasn't there because he was playing with bums and that matters the environment matters mm-hmm. i think it's entirely possible that in a better situation lamella ball would play differently from what we've seen he just pisses away too many possessions he doesn't play defense two years ago there were four he's a six seven point guard he should be so good defensively he's yeah. so long like why are you not good defensively that it makes no sense but he doesn't he, care if the fan vote doesn't count is he an all-star no. Yeah, he didn't. Not. Yeah, he didn't win the fan vote two years ago, right? To he become an all star, reserve. He got picked. No, but he reserve, still... didn't he? Was he? I'm pretty. Sure, I'm pretty sure he got picked by the coaches because that because two years ago the the Hornets were above 500, and he was right. having a great year, I think, or maybe he was a injury replacement. He might have been. An injury replacement. He might have. That might have been. A, that that might have been an Adam, out, Adam right. Silver. Like, hey, let's. Well, let's let's right. boost up the Charlotte market a little bit. You might be right on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just don't know. And I've had mixed feelings about him since he was in high school. Yeah. Because I think I was worried when he was in high school. I was like, if he goes to college, he's just going to get his ass chewed every single day. Yeah. Because I don't think he could have survived in college the way he plays. Right. Because in college, you have to play defense. Right. And he you went to, to play like going to the way. Australian league. Like it's good. It's a good league. It's good competition. But it's not it's not the the hard ass coaching that like exactly. bringing him in. You're going you're like there's some. Right, to right. Him at that that level. You, yeah. you do worry though. It's like if he spends too much time in Charlotte, or with and Charlotte doesn't take that step to become a good team. Yeah, you're going to get to that point where he reaches that age where it's he's too far gone. Right. Yeah. yeah right. Because yeah. eventually he's going to be solidified in who he is as a player, how he approaches the game, and I mean he's still young, but he's running out of time. Right. He's running out of time. I do think that like he's the type that takes the the accolades and all those things that just reinforcement of the way he plays. Yeah. I and I mean, I don't know. Like he's 22. He's got, he time. has, he's on an awful franchise. Well, and for maybe, sure. And right. maybe the change yeah. in ownership will <laughs> fix this. Right. Like I, as, as someone who followed the Timberwolves for decades, like that, you know, that, <laughs> that shit does matter. <laughs> and like, for sure. that's yeah. The new owner sure. came in and they went and got Rudy Gobert. Yeah. A rod. Look, man, A Rod is living a life. Changed everything. Maybe he has a got picture of himself as a centaur. Of Who knows? We don't know. All right, let's go to the last one. Who are the hidden title contenders? Josh, we'll start with you. Hidden title contenders, man. You know, it's tough because I feel like a lot of some of the teams that were in the play in, like the Lakers, Right. If you look purely at the fact they were a playing team last year, you would go, "Oh man, they consider I could consider them as a hidden title contender." Yeah. Right. But they did make but the I don't think finals you, too. But I don't right? think like, you can yeah. do that anymore. Right. 
right? Well, I know that they, they, I, I'm, I think we should start treating this stuff as like, if you get swept in the conference finals, you didn't make the conference finals. That's fair. You know, I, I think me. you have to win a game in the conference finals. No, we got three one. We were up three one. Came back. History, yeah. baby. <laughs> The Bla- the Blazers years ago when they yeah. made the conference finals got swept. That didn't count. Fair. Doesn't count as making it. Yeah. Fair. But yeah, the Lakers, yeah, Lakers, that is a weird one. It's a weird one, right? Because it's yeah. like they technically were barely in. Right. Right. So does that count? Is that a fair? I think it does. Ah. I think it does because I don't think people real like what we just talked about. I don't think people realize the health concerns of LeBron for sure. Like how, how out of condition sure. he's been the last four of the last five years. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm, then I got to go Lakers. I mean, yeah. I think that just if granted, if they stay healthy, right yeah. with AD, you just never know. You have no, you know what I mean? And then you're, I do you're think four of, will he take the torch from LeBron? Well, yeah. And then with the new <laughs> rest rules, man, I think that shakes things up quite a oh, bit. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's because point. you've got LeBron and AD. One of them has to play. Right, and who do you yeah. pick? While we're on them, why are they trying to get Anthony Davis to shoot six threes per game? <laughs> why? Why preserve, is that preserve, preserve the body, an objective man. of the preserve, coaching staff? Preserve the body. That's less. That's less physical play inside. Kind of, you kind of got to do it. It's a long time coming. You got to be careful. Yeah, they're thinking long term. Or what Dave, Dave just said but, in the chat, a secret tank job. I do think, though, <laughs> Christian Wood takes a lot of pressure off. Christian uh, Wood takes a lot of pressure off Anthony Davis. Yeah, I think in terms Because people will be yelling at Christian Wood instead of <laughs> Anthony Davis. Now, listen. <laughs> Yo, why is he it's out It's going to be interesting because that's another guy who it's like he's now in a, in a location where he's really got to mm-hmm. dial it in. He can't be... Chuck, he like, can't do he any can't, of the bullshit he, he did before. He like, can't. Even he in can't. Dallas, he, he did a lot of bullshit. Right. Like, he, he can't, can't do it anymore because he is in a different situation now. Like he's on a contender. Yeah. You know this is I mean? the he's first time guys like, around him. Expectation. This is the first time he's probably been anywhere that he be, that he doesn't actually think he's the best player on the team. Do you think even Christian the best player in his position is better than LeBron and Anthony Davis? I got it. Right. I got it. Right. Oh man, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope not, but that's going to be time yeah. will tell, right? Like, yeah, is he yeah. going to accept the role he's got where it's like, Hey, we need Chris Christian. We need you to come in, you know, play 20 minutes a game, get us your 10, 12 points, grab seven boards. And he's like, make, a, make, make a single defensive rotation. Just play, one exactly. In the game. Like, yeah. And that he's, gives Anthony Davis that rest that he would need. Yeah. I don't think people realize how bad he is defensively. Like, because no one really watches it. Like, he's, I mean, he's arguably the worst defensive big man in the league. Well, it's, the last if I score years. more than you, I win. <laughs> well, that's my philosophy. I, that's, I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to approach the NBA. <laughs> I, I do think the environment piece there could be huge, though. Like, being around LeBron every it, day, just seeing how he approaches things. This will be the true test of whether that, or not he's. He can be legit. It's going to be totally different yeah. than anywhere else he's ever been. Yeah. Other and teams like are we saw, mm-hmm. like, this probably isn't a great comparison, but J.R. Smith t- has talked yeah. about, like, once he got around LeBron, it was like he, he just started following him to workouts. He started mm-hmm. just yep. doing things differently. Yeah. And if that happens with Christian Wood, if he realizes, like, okay, I'm on a minimum deal, I'd rather – resuscitate my career than keep being than keep having an entire lack does, of self-awareness does he but here's the thing does he think he's in need of resuscitating his career or did he's does he look at it as like yeah i'm on a minimum but i just got to the lakers yeah i don't know i see it as like and i heard somebody talking about this where it's like when you get a guy who was told they couldn't do something right he went undrafted you know mm-hmm. what i mean works his way Told he wasn't good enough. Told he couldn't do something. You be- like he believes in himself. Proves them wrong. Then does he ever take anybody's opinion ever again? Because now they're everybody else is just the haters. I proved them wrong yep. once. I but proved I them mean, wrong. They didn't. Honestly, they didn't believe in me, and I did it. I'm going to show them again. But at a certain point, you got to listen to what people say. I can't stress this enough. What, one of my favorite things about Twitter is when people insult you by calling you a casual, which is just paraphrasing a guy who has one of the worst basketball IQs in the league for the last five, four years. And to me, there's just a level of irony that they don't get 
that yeah. they're paraphrasing a guy who hasn't really shown that. But obviously he's skilled. Like he's super skilled. For Can sure. you harness that skill? I love this podcast. We did like 20 minutes on the Rockets and now like <laughs> we got it. That's got to get cut down. That's got to be its own pod. That's too like and not that we shouldn't talk about the Rockets. Yeah. We just we weren't supposed to talk about the Rockets in this one. I want to say that for right. next week. Right. And now we got 35 minutes on the Rockets. All right. One, Side track. Jay's our, turn. Yeah, Jay, your your title, your hidden title contender. Um, so I, I, to me, the title contenders are in plain view right now. The one I think that could surprise people and maybe be, I don't know if contender is the right word, but close to that, New Orleans. Oh, okay. If, if, have, Zion, if Zion helping, is good. if yeah, Zion yeah. is right, they were the top seed in the West into like late December or January, whenever it was last season. And if he's in shape, if he's healthy, those are huge ifs, enormous ifs. Yeah. But like that, that team is super deep. And I like that. I like that and when they have, player. when they have him going as, as a legit, like top end offensive star, maybe not two way star. Yeah. Then I think they have a chance to be really good. Yeah, I like that. Plus, I mean, Ingram, yeah. if it, you know, Ingram's health is also in question, right? Like he's he's someone that misses some time, but he's so good. Zion's so good. They have a deep team. And they have a deep team with like role players. Mm-hmm. Right? Like good, like good role players, like eight, nine, ten deep. And young role players like Dyson Daniels. I love Big Dyson, Dyson Daniels, Daniels guy. Yeah. yeah. I huge think Dyson Daniels. Yeah. Jay Jay last year said he was going to be a defensive player of the year in like two years. I don't think it was quite that strong, but I. I <laughs> you don't think it was quite it, that strong, really? It was. It was funny, Josh. You've watching. known him three weeks. Do you think it was that strong? Oh, I, I that might be a little tame for what he actually said. <laughs> so I, I was. It was funny because I was watching him get murdered by Jalen Brown, right. and I was like, "That actually, that dude's held defensively." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he's Dyson Daniels, man. Yeah, Huge he's, Dyson Daniels. He's guy. good. Yeah. He um. Really good. It seems weird that you could be the reigning Eastern Conference champs and be a hidden title contender. No one is counting the heat in. Everyone is counting the heat out. Everyone's saying it's Milwaukee and it's Boston no longer and it's no one else. And the Miami Heat not only are hidden title contenders, they're going back to the conference finals. Wow. Guaranteed. They're going back. Whether that means they knock off Milwaukee or they knock off Boston, doesn't matter. Who cares? It's one of them, but they're going back to the conference finals. You guys count them out every fucking year and every goddamn year. They come in and Jimmy's got a weird haircut uh, for media day and Eric Spolster coaches his ass off and like Jamal Kane and Haywood Highsmith and Orlando Rob, like all these guys are going to come in and blow everyone's minds. And you guys will be like, they did it again. All they do is mine out diamonds. That's all they do. And they finally did the right thing of letting them go. They're not paying Deion Waiters again. They're not paying Hassan Whiteside again. They let him go. You know why? Because we'll find other cheap guys. Never again. You guys, And Jay has already counted them out, which is a guarantee that they're going to be great. <laughs> that's how it goes every year. Every as year. As soon as I count them one out. One year didn't work. One that's year, when Brent Forbes powers come back outscored to Jimmy Butler. We don't need to talk about that. But one year in a playoff series, Brent Forbes lit them up. That's the only time it doesn't work. <laughs> Brent Forbes is nice, though. Is he a Timberwolf? I think he's a Timberwolf, right? Is that where he's at right now? I think so. That sounds right. Well, anytime we bring up Bryn Forbes, that is the end of the podcast. Make sure you are <laughs> leaving comments. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that all we that stuff do you do. 15 minutes on Bryn. We can do 15 minutes on Bryn. It'll be right after our 30-minute Rockets talk. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to The Athletic. Subscribe to the podcast feed. Leave it five stars. Do all that good support stuff. Um, leave a comment. Leave a review. I don't really care what you say about us. Just make it five stars. That's all it needs to be. Uh, Josh, welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, for joining us. We're very excited about that this season. Jay, you know, that's it. Have a good day, Jay. Hey, you guys too. <laughs>